Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Out My Garden. Okay, so as you can see the rosemary, I have mentioned this before in a couple of videos, but as you can see it's, um, it's really not recovering, it's getting uh, worse and worse. So what I'm going to do is basically cut all that down now. Uh, I'm going to use the shredder, shred it all up. As I don't believe it's any kind of disease, there's no, there's no obvious signs of any disease on the plant. Um, so I'll just use that as, as mulch on the rest of the garden. And then uh, what I'm going to do is move um, the rosemary that's at the front there, I'm going to move that um, a little bit um, further back. Um, to replace where um, this one was and um, basically do that so as soon as we've got that finished I'll show what it looks like okay so what I've done is I've, I've um, taken the old rosemary bush out um, shredded it and then this one that you can see there now that was a bit further forward it was kind of in that kind of position there so all I've done is dug that up and moved it back now the ground is really dry so I don't think it was the wet in the ground that caused the problem but uh, I don't know if you can see this is the this is the wood chip that's, that's come from the um, the old rosemary um, brush and as you can see it's bone dry there's not an ounce of sap in that plant at all um, as you can see it's really dry um, there is some signs of um, some some form of rot there I don't know if that's anything to do with it um, but the roots as you can see the roots are really dry as well so there's no there's no um, sort of moisture problems there at all now because I've moved um, this plant here obviously um, to get it self reestablished what I'm going to do is give that a good watering now um, that'll be the last time I water so obviously and any herbs typically you don't water um, herbs like ground that's dry and that but because I've obviously severed the roots of this one um, from there to move it forward um, you know just to get it settled in I'm just going to give that a good watering in now and then I shall leave that in so that's the rosemary unfortunately um, you know I waited for the other bush to recover but unfortunately it, you know it clearly wasn't um, so what I'll do now is spread that on the ground as some kind of path somewhere and um, the root there I'll burn that the next time I have a fire. So I think there's something very satisfying about picking your own fruit and it's something that you can do um, in, in a quiet evening. You can come up the garden just slowly pick um, your various berries at this time of year. Now these, these berries are actually um, jostaberries. Um, and these were crossed between gooseberries and black currants. And I think you get a lot of different varieties out on the market now, where you know you've got various um, currants and berries that are that are crossed. And to be honest with you, I think some of them are quite novel. Um, and they're the type of things that um, you know, you know, after you've grown them once or twice, you know, you wouldn't um, you wouldn't grow them again. I've grown. Um, cucumber and melon crosses before now and it's you know it's something I'd like to try but uh, you know I wouldn't grow them again but the thing is with um, jostaberries they really do get the best um, cross between gooseberries and um, black currants because you've got the nice tartness of the gooseberry and you've also got the um, you know you've got the black currant taste in there as well now what I'm actually going to be doing with these is just quickly washing the fruit as soon as you've picked a reasonable amount of them um, all I'm going to do is wash these and you can put them straight into the freezer just need to make sure that there's no kind of you get like little bits of stem on the end there so what you need to do is kind of just pick that pick that bit off um, and then you just got the remains of the flour at that end there and what I'm going to be making with this is some jam now there's lots of things you can do anything that you can do with a, a gooseberry or anything you can do with a black currant you can do with just the pretty much because you've got the best of um, both worlds so you can make fools with them, you know, anything you make with gooseberries, you know, you can make jam or fools or, you know, or, you know, all sorts of things really. 
Um, but what I'm going to be doing with these jostebreeze is making some jam. So what I'm going to do is wash the fruit because um, there's like some sticky sort of residue on there, obviously because of the sugar. Um, wash the fruit with uh, some cold water. Then I'm going to put them on a baking tray in the freezer. Um, freeze them. I've already frozen about two kilos of these already. And then as soon as I've got them all picked and I've got a bit of time on my hands, what I'll do is I'll take them all out of the freezer, um, defrost them and then I'll be making some really nice jam with these. Um, but they are a really good fruit. They, you know, because I've grown this as an espalier bush, it doesn't take up a lot of room in the um, allotment. Um, and also with it being um, flat, uh, obviously because it's grown up against the frame, it makes the justabris quite easy to um, pick. I know... Um, I know other people who have got just with bushes who have left them to grow naturally. They, they do make quite a large bush and it makes it a little bit impractical or difficult to pick the berries whereas if you've got it flat against a, um, a framework like this you can very easily go along and pick all the berries so I would most certainly recommend it. Um, I grew them literally as a, as a spalier so it goes across in vertical um, rows but you could grow this as like a fan. Um, Sort of, formation, uh, sort of formation up against a fence or something like that but the one thing I would recommend is what I've found is as it's been growing all of the fruit always forms on the the sunny side so the kind of the, the the south facing side of it so what you need to do is grow it up against a wall or a frame which is south facing and then you're going to get the best best crop off there but those are the justabris and I'll be making these into jam in a couple of weeks time Okay, so that's all the just I've picked as you can see. And so all I need to do about now with these is just wash them, get them in the freezer and I can send them into jam in a couple of weeks time now. If you want a just brush, all you need to do is find somebody that's got one and then if you get a branch like that off it, if you cut off, um, I'm just going to snap this for, to show you on the video, but what you want is the, um, the top sort of bit of the branch. Pull all these leaves off like that and then if you put that into a into a pot. So you want about that much. Cut that off there with a pair of secateurs. Put that into a pot. Put to take another couple of leaves off actually. Like that. That'll soon grow into a um, jasper bush. Put that down the side of a pot. Uh, well drained compost, and that'll soon grow away. Now these these two um, jasper bushes that I've got here. Obviously, there's one here as you can see there growing, um, and there's one over here. So out of those two, I've got. Um, about eight of those full this year, adjustable uh, So you're going to make more than enough jam. Now, <coughs> those two bushes were grown off cuttings um, <coughs> off this bush over here. Here's another adjustable bush, obviously. Um, so all I did is just took the top two branches off off this bush here, about that much, as I said. Um, plant that in a pot down the side, and then it'll grow. And that one was was grown from a cutting from this one over here. So before you know where you are, if you've got a friend with one of the bushes, uh, you can very soon propagate lots of them. So that's actually third generation up here, the, one, uh, the two that I've got. But uh, the bush down here, I'll just quickly show you now, um, was one that was put in about uh, about ten years ago. So this is the original Jostabry bush here. Uh, that was put in about ten years ago and as you can see the size of it, um, you get lots of fruit on it, but they're difficult to pick the fruit. As I say, if you grow it as an espalier like I have, it's much easier to pick. But that's the original. The one I've just shown you was taken from a cutting off this one, and then the two that I've got were taken off cuttings from that. So, as you can see, you can very quickly, without spending any money, create plenty of bushes. Okay, quick tip on picking um, sweet peas, what you want to do is just go to the, obviously that's the flower there, what you want to do is just go down to where that joins with the main stem which is typically flat and then just pull it up and pull that out like that. So that's basically how to pick um, sweet peas, just go down to the bottom like that and then put your thumb on and just pull it down a little bit and then it'll, it'll come off. Now what you want to do is when you're picking sweet peas you want to take the whole stem, don't just, don't just sort of cut it halfway up because um, that'll, that'll basically die off and if you keep picking them like this it'll encourage the plant to grow um, and obviously produce more flowers. Now before you, before you know where you are you can pick quite a few but as, but as I say the best way to grow um, um, sweet peas 
is to um, you know sort of pick them like this on uh, you know pretty much every day. Now what you will find, uh, at least I've had them this year, and there's none on here, but you will find little black beetles. I don't know if you can see that one there on the inside of there. There's some little black beetles. Now, contrary to belief, bees don't pollinate everything. Most things are actually pollinated by by um, beetles. So beetles were here on Earth long before. Um, long before bees were, and um, actually the majority of plants um, actually rely on beetles to to um, pollinate the um, the flowers. Um, and sweet peas is one that that can be pollinated by beetles. So um, you know, don't worry if there are um, little black beetles in your um, or thunderbugs as I call them um, in your sweet peas. All you need to do is as soon as you pick them, if you just gently rattle shake the flowers like that you'll see that these, these start to come out you can just see them inside the flower there and in that one there and what they will do is they'll start to come out like that so you can just see one there on the side <laughs> just quickly blow them and then they'll just then they'll just drop off the flower um, but uh, they won't cause any harm to anybody they're not little ladybirds really so all I'm doing is just picking them around now as soon as you've picked as many as you want um, the best thing to do then is to um, is to cut cut across the end so basically put all your obviously this is easy with two hands put them all together and then cut across there with a pair of scissors so you've got a nice clean cut and they're all at the right length then the uh, the flowers will absorb more water from the from the jar that you put them in and the um, you know they'll last that much longer but um, obviously you know you need to pick all of the flowers if you see any um, um, seed pods on pull them off as well at this time of year you don't want to leave them on until sort of september time um, what you should have is nice long nice long stems and then put these in a, a vase with a, a very narrow neck on um, i find um, bottles are quite good to use um, little or you know sort of um, small bottles with a with you know the neck size about an inch or so across they typically work quite well uh, with them um, sweet peas if you've not got any vases so there's some quite decorative sort of whiskey bottles things like that you can use um, and then just pop, bob them in sort of, sort of that many is about enough give it a quick rattle you can just see a little beetle there <laughs> blow it off <laughs> like that they soon as soon as the flower goes upside down they soon leave the uh, the flower then you can just blow them off before you get down to the house and then um, you're away so that's just a few tips on um, picking sweet peas Okay then, as soon as you've got your sweet peas, put them all so you've got the right length. Obviously there's still a few <laughs> beetles on there, but they'll soon go. Right, just put a piece of string round like that, wrap it round a couple of times, and then just tie that off. Like that. And that'll just keep them together and um, in the right kind of orientation. And all you need to do is chop that like that, and then cut them all at the same length. So find the shortest one, um, and then put them off with a pair of sharp scissors so they're all at the same length. Now, the water will go um, up there a lot easier than if you just left it as it was. Now, if you're going to if you're going to take these anywhere, you know you're not going to put them in water straight away. Put some tissue paper around the bottom and some silver paper, and soak the put some tissue paper, wrap some tissue paper around, soak that in water and then just put some silver paper around just to keep the water there then they'll they'll keep like that for a few hours if you are going to put them in a vase straight away all you need to do is just drop that in the neck of your um, bottle or your um, your vase and they'll, and they'll be really good in the house for at least three or four days Okay, quick update on the cucumbers. As you can see, uh, at the bottom end of the plant here, you know, we've got two or three um, cucumbers on each plant. We've already picked a few, as you can see, some of these are ready to be picked. Now, as you go up the plant, some of the next ones that came have all kind of shriveled up, and I think that's because um, I've, I've left these on at the bottom, so basically they've all kind of come at once. But if you look at the top of the plant, what I've done now is I've started to trail it back down. It's unnatural for plants to grow downward, um, but all being well they'll they'll grow down and all I've done basically is put another bamboo cane at the top here and then basically um, connect it into the roof there at the bottom so it's got a nice support running down and as you can see there are further 
um, sort of cucumbers forming on the end here. So I think as soon as we've picked um, these off the start of the plant, I think the rest of them will start to come. But uh, all of the plants are pretty much in the same condition. You can see this one here. We've already taken one off here. That's got another really good one on there. Um, and there we've got another couple in there. Uh, and if you look towards the top of the plant again, we've got some more smaller cucumbers coming. So that's what the cucumbers look like at the moment. So I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Along the Garden. Mm -hmm.